I wanted to use my CR as an example of a fully functioning ignition system. As it turns out, sometime in the past month, my ignition coil died, so that's good. Timing? We got jokes! The quickest way to see if you are having ignition issues is to remove your spark plug, ground it to the outside of the cylinder, turn your lights off, and kick your bike over. If you have no spark or spark with low performance, this is how to troubleshoot the ignition system on your 1997-2001 Honda CR250. To test your ignition, you will need a digital multimeter and a direct voltage adapter. You can pick up both for around $60 through the link below. Troubleshooting only works when you stay organized. Write everything down and take your time, as this can get very frustrating very quickly. To make troubleshooting as easy as possible, do not try to chase the problem. Test each component individually and write down each test result as you go. Recording each result will let you find the problem on paper instead of jumping around between components. When troubleshooting each component, you need to test each possible cause in order. To make troubleshooting even easier, follow along with my step-by-step how-to guide at FixYourDirtBike.com. The ignition coil is mounted on the front left of the frame. The exciter coil and ignition pulse generator are part of the stator mounted behind the flywheel. The ignition control module is mounted between the frame rails and under the gas tank on 1997-1999 through 1999 models and behind the number plate on 2000-2001 through 2001 models. Start by removing the flywheel cover and gas tank. You will be testing the stator through the wiring harness, so you do not need to remove the flywheel or the stator. Remove the ignition control module by pushing the rubber mount up off the mounting tabs, then down and out towards the back of the bike. When testing peak voltage, you will need to be able to kick your bike over while keeping the test leads connected. If you don't have a helper, strap your bike to something solid, zip tie your multimeter to your bike, and use handy wire in the gator clips of your direct voltage adapter as needed. It is critical that you keep your spark plug grounded throughout testing. An ungrounded plug can destroy the ignition coil. Make sure you have a fresh spark plug and cover the spark plug hole with a towel. The ignition control module is also known as a CDI. The ignition control module cannot be tested and is not serviceable. The only way to test it is by testing everything else. If every other component passes, then you know the ignition control module has gone bad. If you have no spark, test your engine stop switch first because that's usually the problem. Set your multimeter to the lowest ohm setting and connect the leads to the tails. While holding the leads to the tails, push the stop switch. With the button pushed, you should see continuity at the meter. If you read continuity without pressing the button, the stop switch is bad. Test the ignition coil for peak voltage along with resistance between three points. To test peak voltage, connect your positive test lead to the black-yellow primary terminal and the negative test lead to the ground bolt. Set your multimeter to 200 volts DC. Kick your bike over as fast as possible to get an accurate reading. Your ignition coil peak voltage should be at least 100 volts. To test the primary coil resistance, remove the direct voltage adapter from your multimeter and connect the standard leads. Set your multimeter to 200 ohms, touch the positive test lead to the primary terminal and the negative test lead to the ground. Your primary ignition coil should be between 0.2 and 0.4 on 1997 through 1999 models and 0.1 to 0.3 on 2000 through 2001 models. To test the secondary coil, keep the positive test lead on the primary terminal and touch the negative test lead to the connection inside the spark plug boot. Your secondary coil should be between 9 and 16 ohms with the spark plug boot connected. Remove the spark plug boot and insert the negative test lead into the end of the cable. Your secondary coil should be between 4 and 8 ohms without the spark plug boot. If your ignition coil shows a low peak voltage, check the following in order. Bad direct voltage adapter connections, meter impedance is too low, cranking speed is too low, the test and pulse is not synchronized, but if measured over the minimum once, the system is normal, poor connection or open circuit, bad exciter coil, bad ignition coil, or a bad ignition control module when all others check out. If your ignition coil shows no peak voltage, check the following in order. A bad direct voltage adapter connection, short in the engine stop switch, a bad engine stop switch, poor ignition control module connection, open circuit or no ground of ignition control module, a bad direct voltage adapter, bad exciter coil, 
bad ignition pulse generator, or a bad ignition control module. If you are reading correct voltage with no spark, it could be a bad spark plug, a leaking ignition coil secondary current, or a bad ignition coil. The exciter coil is part of the stator, but you will test it at the ignition control module. Disconnect the wiring harness with the blue and white wires. To test the exciter coil peak voltage, connect your direct voltage adapter to your multimeter and set it to 200 volts DC. Connect the positive test lead to the blue wire terminal and the negative test lead to the white wire terminal. Be sure to connect the leads under the connections and the wire extensions should reach about one quarter inch into the harness. Kick your bike over and record the peak voltage. The exciter coil peak voltage should be at least 100 volts. Unfortunately, it's tough to get a reliable reading on the exciter coil peak voltage because you will not be able to kick your bike over fast enough. When starting your bike, you really only need to kick once or twice and then inertia takes over and the bike does the rest. As you can see here, I am kicking the absolute shit out of my bike and barely reading over 20 volts. So consider this when doing your paper troubleshooting and come back to it if needed. To test the resistance of the exciter coil, use the standard test leads and set your multimeter to 200 ohms. Connect the positive test lead to the blue terminal and the negative test lead to the white terminal. The resistance should be between 2 and 20 ohms on 1997 through 1998 models and between 9 and 25 ohms on 1999 through 2001 models. Apply dielectric grease to the inside of the wiring harness and reconnect the exciter coil. If your exciter coil shows a low peak voltage, check the following in order. Meter impedance is too low, cranking speed is too low, test and pulse is not synchronized, but if measured once over the minimum the system is normal, or a bad ignition module. If your exciter coil shows no peak voltage, check the following in order. Bad direct voltage adapter, or a bad exciter coil. The ignition pulse generator is part of the stator, but you will test it at the ignition control module. Disconnect the wiring harness with the blue-yellow and green-white wires. To test the ignition pulse generator peak voltage, connect your direct voltage adapter to your multimeter and set it to 2 volts DC. Connect the positive lead to the blue-yellow terminal and the negative test lead to the green-white wire terminal. Kick your bike over and record the peak voltage. The ignition pulse generator peak voltage should be at least 0.7 volts. To test the resistance of the ignition pulse generator, use the standard test leads and set your multimeter to 2000 ohms. Connect the positive test lead to the blue-yellow terminal and the negative test lead to the green-white terminal. The resistance should be between 180 and 280 ohms. Apply dielectric grease to the inside of the wiring harness and reconnect the ignition pulse generator. If your ignition pulse generator shows a low peak voltage, check the following in order. Meter impedance is too low, cranking speed is too low, the test and pulse is not synchronized, but if measured once over the minimum the system is normal, or a bad ignition control module. If your ignition pulse generator shows no peak voltage, check the following in order. Bad direct voltage adapter, or a bad ignition pulse generator. To fully read and adjust the timing, you will need a timing gun and a tachometer. Or, you can make sure the tab on the crankcase and the mark on the stator are aligned and call it a day. If you have an aftermarket flywheel, make sure the magnet lines up with the ignition pulse generator and the double scribe marks line up with the stator. While not impossible, it is highly improbable that the timing would be off if your CR is stock. I did not cover the power jet solenoid for two reasons. One, it only came on 97 and 98 models, and two, it never really worked when it did work. If you really want to test your power jet solenoid, message me on Facebook and I'd be happy to help you out. If you have any questions or need any help troubleshooting your ignition system, please let me know in the comments or on social. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs>